Hello viewers, in this video you are going to learn about protoplast. As we have learned in our previous video, when we see a plant cell under electron microscope, we can observe two parts. They are cell wall and protoplast. About cell wall we have learned. Now it is time to learn about protoplast. Here in this video you will learn about protoplast structure and functions of the cell membrane and protoplasm structure and its functions. Finally, summary. At first, let us know about protoplast. If we remove a plant cell wall completely by using some cellular enzymes, we can get a spherical shaped structure that is called protoplast. These protoplasts are also called naked cells. The spherical protoplast is bounded by cell membrane and the term protoplast is coined by Hanstein. All the content of the cell along with the nucleus is called protoplasm. This protoplasm is bounded by cell membrane. Both protoplasm and cell membrane combinedly called as protoplast. If we observe the picture clearly, in a plant cell, nucleus is present. The nucleus is surrounded by the jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. Both the nucleus and cytoplasm combinedly called as protoplasm. This protoplasm is bound with cell membrane or plasma membrane. Now this protoplasm and cell membrane combinedly called as protoplast. This protoplast is protected by cell wall. Let us know about cell membrane. It is also called as plasma membrane or plasma lemma. It has a highly complex structure. Different models proposed to explain the structure of cell membrane. They are sandwich or trilamellar model, unit membrane and fluid mosaic model. Sandwich model is proposed by Daniel Lee and Davison. According to this, Cell membrane consists of two protein layers on either side of bimolecular phospholipid layer. It appears to be the bilipid layer is sandwiched between two slices of proteins. Unit membrane model is proposed by Robertson. According to this model, not only cell membrane, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. are all large structure. It is same as the sandwich model. But the difference is, Daniel Lee and Davison said, said that proteins are spherical or round in shape. But Robertson said that proteins are not in spherical shape, but they are in fibrous form. Fibrous means thread-like structure. So that is the only difference between the trilamellar model and this unit membrane model. So they said that, that means uh, Daniel Lee and Davison said that Proteins are in spherical shape, but Robertson said that the proteins are not in spherical shape, but they are in fibrous form. Now, another model of cell membrane, that is fluid mosaic model. It was proposed by Singer and Nicholson, and it is the most widely accepted model. According to this, cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer in which protein molecules embedded in it. Just like in the ocean of phospholipids, proteins present like icebergs or simply protein icebergs in a sea of lipids. If we zoom into the cell membrane, we can see a pattern of different types of molecules. This kind, kind of arrangement gives the mosaic appearance to the cell membrane. That's why these both scientists named those model as the fluid mosaic model. According to this model, cell membrane is composed of different components like phospholipids, proteins, carbohydrates and cholesterol. If we see the structure of a single phospholipid molecule, it consists of two parts, head and two tails. 
this head part is hydrophilic in nature hydrophilic means it absorbs water or we can simply say water loving surface whereas the tile part is hydrophobic in nature means it cannot able to absorb water simply we can say water fearing surface these phospholipid molecules are amphiphilic in nature amphiphilic nature means in each molecule one surface with a hydrophilic nature and the opposite surface with hydrophobic this dual nature we can observe in phospholipid molecule if we observe in the picture the hydrophilic head pointing outwards and hydrophobic tails at inwards this phospholipid layer helps to give fluidity nature to the plasma membrane fluidity means the plasma membrane shows some movements like waves in the ocean this fluidity nature is the special feature of plasma membrane so continuously this plasma membrane move just like waves in the ocean along with phospholipid molecules proteins also play a vital role in the cell membrane these proteins are arranged in two patterns extrinsic and intrinsic extrinsic proteins means these proteins are present on the surface of the bilipid layer and intrinsic proteins means these proteins are totally embedded in the fluid matrix next carbohydrates carbohydrates are the third major component of plasma membrane these are always found on the outer surface of the cells if the carbohydrates bound to proteins they are said to be glycoproteins or if they bound these both glycoproteins and glycolipids combinedly called as glycocalyx which means sugar coating this glycocalyx is highly hydrophilic and attracts more amount of water so the substances that are dissolved in water are also highly absorbed along with peripheral proteins carbohydrates form some specialized sites on the cell surface to recognize body cells and foreign cells of tissues so it works as an immune system another important structure which is present in the cell membrane is cholesterol cholesterol also present in the cell membrane it plays a vital role in the plasma membrane so cholesterol is a type of steroid it can fit into the spaces present between phospholipid tails these molecules are hydrophobic in nature it helps in regulating molecules enter and exit from the cell and also it holds the phospholipid molecules together so that they don't separate without cholesterol the phospholipids start to separate from each other and leave large gaps now let us see the functions of the cell membrane the main function of the cell membrane is to protect the cell from its surroundings and it is selectively permeable means it allows only few substances into the cell it also plays a vital role in providing the shape to the cell and it performs osmoregulation osmosis means movement of water from higher concentration to lower concentration now let us know about the protoplasm the plant cells are filled with transparent viscous and colloidal solution that solution we can call as the protoplasm viscous means the substance having thick and sticky consistency between solid and liquid which means jelly like nature and colloidal means it is a mixture in which one substance of soluble and insoluble particles are suspended in another substance the protoplasm contains both organic and inorganic substances and it also contains elements like calcium magnesium iron iodine and sodium so on the protoplasm contains two components they are cytoplasm and nucleus so cytoplasm and nucleus combinedly called as protoplasm the protoplasm is bounded by cell membrane or plasma membrane
based on the protoplasm nature different scientists suggest different views like granular reticular fibrillar and alveolar among these all sol gel nature is widely accepted sol gel nature means this protoplasm exists in solution condition at the same time sometimes jelly like substance or gel like condition it can be interconvertible from solution to gel or gel to solution you can observe in the picture in the solution state the molecules are somewhat in freely arranged but in gel like substance the molecules are stick together this protoplasm helps in the growth and development of an organism and the major component of protoplasm is water it exhibits brownian movement and tyndall effect let us know what is brownian movement the particles which are present in protoplasm move randomly in all directions whereas tyndall effect means if we pass a light beam through protoplasm the path of light can be seen clearly let us see the functions of the protoplasm so this protoplasm contains genetic material in it it controls the activity of the cell as we have already learned protoplasm is an active center it helps in the growth and development of an organism let us recall today's topic about protoplast so protoplast are the naked cells if we remove cell wall with cellular enzymes we can get spherical shaped protoplast protoplasm it is a colorless material which is living material of cell and contains cytoplasm nucleus and other cell organelles plasma membrane it is a layer that surrounds the cytoplasm whereas cytoplasm means it is a gel like sub substance which is present between cell membrane and nucleus according to cell membrane fluid mosaic model is the most widely accepted model according to this model cell membrane contains a mosaic appearance because of the presence of phospholipids proteins and carbohydrates plasma membrane shows fluidity and mobility that means it shows some movement regularly this phospholipid molecule moves and this plas plasma membrane is selectively permeable in nature that means it allows only few substances these molecules are amphiphilic in nature that means dual nature one surface with hydrophilic and the opposite surface with hydrophobic nature and the protein molecules are arranged in two forms extrinsic and intrinsic carbohydrates also perform two forms they are glycoproteins and glycolipids okay viewers that's it for now thank you for watching our video please hit the like button if you like our video and if you want to give any suggestion or need any specific topic to be explained in our next video please mention it in the comment section we will be uploading more videos through our channel every sunday or monday so please subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates